Welcome back everyone, this is the State of the Nation. With the IMF uh, 17th program in full swing in Sri Lanka, we see many warning signs indicating that tough times are ahead for this country. Even though the government was very swift to project to the people that no sooner we are in the IMF program, then all our problems are sorted. Unfortunately, the reality is far from it. We as a nation are yet to start our debt restructuring talks with our creditors, local and overseas. There's a possibility that those talks might fail and hence we might be in a tough spot in the future. The government recently said that the debt restructuring presentation to India and the Paris Club would be done uh, together later in May, while China will be dealt separately. However, what we need to know is that nothing is guaranteed as yet. On top of that, a report from Bloomberg recently stated that Sri Lanka risks IMF roadblock as local debt plan gets few takers. In translation, local creditors are not interested in restructuring the local debt. According to Bloomberg, some of Sri Lanka's biggest lenders, including Commercial Bank and Hatton National Bank, warned that a local debt restructuring would lead to capital impairment as banks are forced to set aside more money to cover losses. To talk more on this and uh, get uh, more clarity, joining me now is a political economist and senior lecturer at the University of Jaffna, Dr. Ahilan Kadragamar, who joins me via Zoom from Jaffna. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your time. Doctor, now, Bloomberg says that the second installment which we are supposed to get from the IMF is in jeopardy due to the local debt restructuring issue. What does this mean exactly? Ahilan, now, when we sign the uh, IMF uh, agreement, um, the IMF had two major conditions even leading up to the agreement. One, that Sri Lanka should have a primary budget surplus by 2024. That means our revenues should be higher than our expenditure. And second, that we have to move forward on debt restructuring with a variety of creditors. Um, that's bilateral donors like China, Japan, and India. Um, but more difficult are the uh, bondholders because almost 53% of our external debt is commercial borrowing from bondholders. Now, the bondholders are playing hardball with us, and they are saying that if they are to restructure their debt, Sri Lanka's own domestic debt, particularly treasury bills and treasury bonds should also be restructured. But that's going to be very difficult because when you restructure treasury bills and bonds, it could cause a domestic banking crisis, or it could end up uh, greatly reducing, for example, uh, employees' provident fund. A lot of that is holding these treasury bonds. So this is uh, the problem that Sri Lanka is now caught in because the IMF is demanding that Sri Lanka show that it is moving forward on uh, debt restructuring. The bondholders want us to restructure our domestic debt, but that can lead to a severe crisis or undermine uh, working people's retirement funds. Doctor, what are we to expect if uh, we cannot restructure the local debt? Now, Mahesh, this debt restructuring process was anyway going to be very difficult. Um, some of our economists and um, international actors, you know, put it forward like a piece of cake, but it's not. In many countries, debt restructuring has dragged on for years because creditors don't like to give a haircut. They want to squeeze out as much as they can. And for Sri Lanka to be on a sustainable path, we have to reduce our debt through either debt restructuring or some economists would even say through debt cancellation. So we cannot give in on certain things. I think the problem with the way in which our government, our policymakers have approached both the IMF and the debt restructuring process is basically they have surrendered. They have not even tried to negotiate. They have, in the process, lost all bargaining power. But even at this late stage, 
we have to maintain our position that economic stability, the welfare of our people is of primacy. There's no point getting an IMF agreement or going through debt restructuring if people are going to starve tomorrow, if our economy completely collapses. It's already collapsed. Last year, economic growth contracted by 7.8%. The last two quarters, the economy is contracting anywhere between 13 and 9%. So we really have to push back and we'll have to uh, stumble along, but we cannot give in on issues like domestic debt restructuring. Uh, indeed, uh, Doctor. Now, most of the nationalist economists said that things would get bad with the IMF deal. But if you take uh, as to how things are right now, the rupee seems to be strengthening against the dollar. The economy is stable. Supply chains are on track, and things seems to be back to normal. So, did those economies get it wrong? Now, Mahesh, first of all, I think you have to be clear. You know uh, who these economists are, because in Sri Lanka, as in many countries. There's a wide spectrum of economists. Um, some of them I would categorize as neoliberal or uh, the Chicago School or neoclassical economists. Uh, others, um, it's not clear where they're coming from ideologically. Because the truth of the matter is, over the last 14 years, even when the Rajapaksa regime was in power, they were the ones who first started floating sovereign bonds way back in 2007. While they spoke of sovereignty, they actually sold our sovereignty with sovereign bonds. So many, I would call nationalist economists, were with the Rajapaksa regime all along, even as they went on the neoliberal path. Now, there are some economists, more from a left perspective, who've been critical of the IMF approach. And there, I would argue that what we are seeing now is not stability, because if you look at the headline figures, fuel consumption is down by 50%. The amount of cement consumed has now dropped by 53%. So our economy has completely collapsed. So to claim that we are being stable when unemployment is on the rise, even the World Bank says 500,000 jobs have been lost. So in that kind of a context, um, just claiming that uh, rupee is stabilizing does not mean much. It's come at huge cost and we have to change the economic trajectory. Indeed, uh, Doctor, even most economies are just changing their allegiance whenever they find it beneficial to them. Thank you very much. We have to leave it at that. That was political economist and senior lecturer at the University of Jaffna, Dr. Ahilan Kadragama. A short break now. When we return, is it fair to ask Sri Lanka's middle income class to foot the economic recovery bill? This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.